that we've got Yuri here, Stallion Horse, Anglo Arab. Um, he's a bit sharp, to say the least. This is the reason we've not filmed him up till now, is there weren't much point because you couldn't get him to listen to you. So I'm going to explain something we do. Don't make the tapes right, it's just what we do here at HDP. So we'll buy him range from um, whatever company it may be, those so a couple in rain now. Well, the and the couple in rain back. These are biothane. Well they're all biothane, but this biothane I've got in my hand is beautiful. Really is lovely. We get it from blue equine. So we'll buy new reins and actually cut them off and have them re-stitched on in this material which is just the best. You know, you can wind it round, screw it up. It's there. It's very, very similar to a supple lever to handle. Also what we do, obviously, you've got your holes for adjustment for a couple of reins to slide up and down. Now that's a subject all on its own because it seems from the questions I get from all over the world, different places, I don't really understand how the coupling rings work. Um, I don't mean that disrespectful to anybody, but if you, you don't know, then you don't know, do you? I mean, or if someone explains to you, or, or look, look, put it this way, the way I see it, I always say that because, you know, what I do, don't mean to say it's right, it's right for me. So also what we do on the billets, so that's the piece that passes through the bit, that makes the connection to the bit. On those billets, we always have them lengthened. There's a downside to them being lengthened, um, which I'll talk about in a minute. But basically, what I've done, on the coupling rein, so from Cloud's rein, the coupling rein going over to the stallion has been let out. Been let out a bit. It's got about four different holes. And instead of having one hole, it's got four. Some, some reins we haven't got six holes in. So the billets on all four ends of these reins have got a series of holes. So it gives you much more adjustment. So you can see clouds running straight, and I've got this all running straight. Now, what you would do if you look at clouds here, I'll just stop for a minute people say oh well he's only I'll tell you this now if he breaks that cartilage of Cloud's ear he could damage the shape of his ear I'm not gonna make him deaf or anything but it's, it would it could, you know if you crush that cartilage it will grow back with a kink in it so and he was very happy to do that he'd also get hold of the blinker and bite it um, anything he could get hold of really now that is not the push He's a bad horse or anything like that, that's nonsense. The horse is a stallion, he's just putting his mark on the job saying I'm here. Hey, I don't care if he's worry either. Um, so what I've been able to do is on the offside of the stallion I've taken right there, buddy, to fill it all the way up. So it's probably four inches shorter than it was the other day. And that's keeping him away from the pole. And what I'm, the reason I'm doing it is to get him to concentrate on his job. All the time he's got his head over the cloud, he's, his brain falls out his bum, to be honest with you. And you, no, no point in doing anything because without communication, how are you going to teach us? stage of the job um, it's a very difficult thing to say but at this stage of the job he should be more advanced than what he is stallion or not I don't bother me with the stallion um, come up here come up come over Claire come over Claire So he was 
jumping over these slow signs now. And a little look, but he's accepted them now. Now, normal, normally, you can't say normally with all shit, because they're all bloody different, but basically, you know, if it weren't a stallion, he'd have had that the first few days of going out, he'd have picked up that, the, you know, the slow sign weren't going to bite him, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, he has got, um, look, all stallions, they stand up, don't they, for themselves, they're showing you, look how good I am, look, you know. Um, so he's just got to stamp his mark on it, but what we've got to do, the lady wants to drive the horse, then he's got to be impeccable behaviour, hasn't he? Um, just like any other horse we do, and we'll do it, I mean, it might take a little bit longer. But if, so you say to me, well, if he's been with you a few weeks, why didn't I do this? That wouldn't have been any good, seriously. In my opinion, it wouldn't have been any good because I've, he's just started listening to me when I'm driving. When I'm just, so I can talk to him, you know, and he'll come back occasionally and, hey, you do, see that? These ears have come round and just saying, what's Dad saying, you know? So we started to communicate. I could have tried to do this and lots of other little things we do, um, but he weren't ready to think about giving you his attention. And he's not wonderfully better now, but he's a lot better than what he was. So... Because he goes along wanting to nibble and talk to Cloud and pick Cloud's pole chain up and bite it, shake it, and all this crazy thing. Bite his blink, his bite his ear, bite him on the neck. Not, not to hurt him necessarily, but he's half playing, you know? Just like two colts would. He's four year old. Um, And he goes away to have the semen taken off of him. Um, we don't actually cover mares, but he's obviously got to be tormented by a mare, and he to do his job. So you can see he's going along here now. What, is, what, what would happen in this situation right this moment? Right? He would be much worse than that reaction because his concentration would have been on cloud. Yeah. Or on the pole. You know, he try and rip the plastic covering off the pole. So but we're getting there now, we've got some communication going. That will grow. As long as I don't get it wrong, um, you know, no one's infallible. So when I ask him something, I've got to know he's listening to me. Like he's not listening to a bird in the tree and that must throw his ears back. I want to know he's definitely connecting with me. Yeah? So you say, well, keep talking to him. No. You can't keep talking to him. I just want to talk to him when I need to. Because if I've been, like, with some of them, you hear me, you know, kidding them on and, you know, come on, my baby boy. And he don't need that. That's not what he needs. He needs just right from the start now. Now he's starting to listen. Clear and precise. So I'm asking him to do something and he's got to do it. So this is an example. Oh! Stand still. Stand. You do. I'll change my voice. I do not want him to touch Cloud in any way. And he's got to stand now. Yeah? When I've got to ask him to move off in a minute. I'm going to say walk and I want to see him hit the collar and not hang back and wait for instructions from Cloud, yeah? I better go because Cloud's going. I want him to listen to me and say, right, so I'm just going to tap him. Walk, walk. Not bad, but not good. A little bit slow away, wasn't he? No good. But he's walking, he's doing what I asked him to do. He's not gone straight to the trot, has he? Just walking there like that. He's only got a rubber bit in, I don't care whether they're stallions or whatever, they all get the same, these new bits, the Wendering bits, which are lovely, you know, the soft bit, very soft bit. Very 
these shelves are virtually indestructible. I can't make out what I made them out of. What actual compound it is that the bit is made of itself. And all we do, that'll do. I want to talk to him and you with that. He'd come straight back, concentrate on his job. You know, physically come back away from the power. Now, I don't mind if he's upset by the motor car. You know, that will be left over in all there. That will come with time. Unless they're going to listen, you've got no chance. So, going back to what I started with, I've tightened the outside up to keep his head to the offside. Yeah? A little bit more pressure on the near side of his mouth. Yeah? Right, I'll just hold him over there. Right. Cloud has got his straight or adjusted so his head's pretty straight. It will be influenced by the other horse because we always have a ring going through to pick those coupling reins up. And that's for safety, alright? You know what I've done. That's my baby, good boy. Now there's a thing he's done then, lovely. That's beautiful. It's very hard to um also the other thing is I'm concentrating all the time on what I'm doing, so sometimes when I listen back to what I'm saying. It must drive you mad when you're listening to it. <laughs> if I'm trying to do two things at once, which is never good. Come on, my baby. Come on, my baby. Yes, you are, darling. Come on, my cloudy, you good boy. Cloud's our school milestone, so he doesn't look to be one for a friend of mine. Um, but he had a bit of an accident with Cloud and uh, with his shoulder, you know, and damaged his shoulder quite bad. Um, someone drove past in a flood when they were going through the flood about six inches deep for about 20, they said 20 30 metres long covering the road. And the, Thing went through. I suppose they thought it was, it was funny, um, and they, you know, drove through it fast with a, a van and splash water right over, you know, 10, 15 foot in the air. They had jumped and went to the side, and there was a farm gate way there, you know, an entrance into a field. Good boy, Cloudy, you good boy. Um, uh, entrance into a field, and, uh, he caught the wheel and fired Tom out the seat. Cloud just stood there once, you know. So he didn't do anything, really, just stood there. And um, fired Tom out the seat. He flew through the air for a long way and landed on his shoulder. So it damaged his shoulder quite a lot. It's been a long time early to get him right. So he's been with me for a couple of years or more now. But he's a lovely boy, he's Cloud. Like he's got so much patience, you know. Well, he has to a certain extent. If, as long as they don't come into his space, well, he said, you know, this, this side of the pole is my space. That's the line there. Don't cross it, you know. If he does, he'll push their head back to his head. He doesn't really... He wouldn't... He would, he would look like he was going to bite them, but he wouldn't actually do it. There we go. Oh, there so we're going, you know, pretty good. We're only going a short distance, maybe about eight miles. And what I'm going to do is come up here on this main road in a minute, then turn off again. And the reason I'm going to turn off, there's a stables there with several horses in the field. And I want him to be able to go by without talking to him. So this will be his first time of seeing any loose horses in a field since he's been with us. The other thing is, with this horse, the lovely horse it is, I believe, I might be wrong, but I believe he'll, what I call, overload him in a minute. Now he's started to listen, he'll take in so much and then he won't be able to 
taking any more. It'd be like a child at school, it needs half term. You know, half term, you know, I know they're a nuisance for families, you know, because the children got to be looked after, etc. Et but a child needs that. Needs to come away from the cold face, if you like, and, you know, just play and have some fun. And then they come back refreshed again, and they can learn again. Down there constantly learning, or you're constantly trying to get it into their head, it's going to be hard work. So we'll, what we'll do with this one, well I won't, if we've got time to do it, but it takes so long to make this one, she'll put some clips up of where he was before, you know. So he's not paying, he would pay attention to Cloud now and want to play with him, if we let that fill it out. So his head could come over. So we're not putting any more pressure on his mouth, which is no point when we pride ourselves on doing any horse in a rubber bit, regardless, stadium, whatever it might be. You know, whether it's covered mares, whatever it's done. So he's just started listening now and he's been here a month. Now you think, well that's lovely, carry on. And you know, you'll have him in single and he'll be doing his job. I don't think I don't think at the moment that would be something I'd want to commit to and say yes that would happen because I think where he's had one job producing his sperm yeah? he's had one job producing his sperm he's broken to ride but the fella that brought him here you know the groom said they very seldom take him out because of other horses about you know one wants a bad accident where I'm standing and got over the, you know, steady, boy, steady, 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 steady. And he wanted to lift his arse, he'd have a buck, you know, there, when he's chucking his quarters about like that. But he's just knowing how to talk to him, out, you know, tell him, no, you don't do that. If you look at our vehicles, it, it, the horses are quite a bit away from the vehicle what they'd be under normal circumstances. You'd be back maybe six, eight inches more. Um, but we like him out there because he can get his feet up if he's got a buck. And if you say, well, what you should do is put it on. Now what I should do is train them so they don't back. So I can do whatever I want with him and he's not going to retaliate to it. Well, if you put, a, you know, you can put it on a, on a pair of vehicle, a bucking strap, you can do it, but um, it's not where I want to be. I want to train that out, and you don't do that, it's not the right behaviour. Or it's not acceptable in that right way, you know. He's got a nice mouth on him. Um, I don't know what he was like to ride, because I didn't actually... Conversation there was when he also arrived. But, uh, you know, he got a nice mouth. And what he's like to ride, I wouldn't have a clue. You know, he was already done before he came. But, he's just going along here nice now. He's listening to me a bit. I like the way his ears are. Instead of being on cloud all the time and wanting to play with him, he's picking up other information, pricking them forward there. You can see, you see that bird just fly across there. And all these things he picks up, the more things he sees, the better he'll be, he? The more things he sees, the more he gets used to it. Now I'm going to let him go now a little bit, let him go a little, you know, going on a bit too fast, really. Hey, hey, go on. A back look, but I can just control him and go, Oi, that'll do. You settle down. That'll do. Oh, it's back again. You can see that there, he'd like to throw his feet back. But that's not out of badness. That's not making him a bad horse. He's doing what, what you could say, what he's been allowed to do. If it had been my, you know, when I had my stallions 
people, when they were broke, they you could take them in any company anywhere. Take them out of Ireland, put an edge collar on them and leave them to a mare, they cover the mare, make no mistake. But as soon as they had it, you know, they're working their harness on it. And different entirely. You could take them, park them right next to a mare in season, they wouldn't even look at it. And if you look on the films, you'll see that through the point here. We've got a mare, like two stallions and a mare between. It says two stallions and a mare to film. And uh, the mare's heavily in season between two stallions. And they don't talk to her at all. They make no noise whatsoever. They don't move or, you know, have any interact interaction with them. Hardly at all. So, we're coming up to the main road now. We'll make the We'll finish this film now and then we'll make the other one when we see these other horses in a while. That'll do. That'll do. Thanks, you. That'll do. You there. That'll do.